So once you were cast in Loki, yeah. the internet deduced pretty quickly that you were going to be playing an older version of Loki. Well, Was it as I'm the oldest person on any film unit that I'm on now, so not rocket science to work that one out, Adam. I mean, you could have played any kind of different kind of character, but specifically an older version of Loki. Did you feel like you had a Loki quality that you were bringing to the production? Well, I had been following Tom Hiddleston since I first saw him in a production of Othello with uh, Chibita Etiofo and uh, Ewan McGregor, you know, decades ago in London. And met him backstage and I said, you know, you're, you're so extraordinarily talented, you're going to have an enormous career, I can't wait to watch and see what you do, and indeed he has, um, not rocket science to work that one out, and we had jokingly uh, joshed with each other down the years socially that because we have a sort of vague similarity in the way that we look at our physiques are, that we could play father and son in something, so when at the beginning of last year before lockdown, I got this offer to play classic old Loki, I thought, aha, finally, this is what we have been joshing about all the all this time, and it's now come to pass. So that's, that's how I, that's how I understood it. So talk to me about the costume. It's I know it's based on the, a classic Loki costume. But what did you think when you first laid eyes on it? I said three words, where's the muscles? <laughs> He said, what do you mean, where's the muscles? I said, your costume design drawing and Jack Kirby's original illustration of the 60s comics, this guy had muscles. I said, you've cast a guy who's got no muscles. And I said, where are the muscles? And they said, no, you don't need the muscles. I said, how can I find Asgard if I've got no muscles? He's got muscles. He's in a muscle suit. That's the whole point. Otherwise, I'm just a, you know, Kermit in tights. And they said, don't worry about it. Use your magic as Loki. So I was very, very aggrieved that I wasn't allowed to have a muscle suit. And I still am. So when we do the offshoot of classic old Loki and alligator.com, I am going to have muscles. Let me tell you now. Okay. Well, you spoke of alligator Loki. What was it like working with alligator Loki? He was three sort of stuffed cushions that had been sewn together in a sort of vague alligator shape. Um, so he was, feather, he was a featherweight version, but at least he was actually there. He was on a tennis ball on a stick. Was there anybody that was sort of growling on set as, as he would, or did you have to kind of work that in your own imagination? No, we had to just imagine that. And I love the fact that I had the doc, I was the only one with the Dr. Doolittle talent for being able to understand and interpret on Alligator's behalf. Your character has such a wonderful arc in miniature in that episode. He goes from being enormously cynical about his lot in life to kind of refinding his glorious purpose. Yeah. And it culminates with him conjuring this enormous imaginary Asgard. How does one as an actor get into a place where one does that? You keep thinking if the costume department had given me muscles, it would have helped. So they had huge, you know, turbine, airport sized jumbo jet like air wind machines that were blowing, you know, hell for leather. And then I had a mark on a on a camera crane that was moving around in the in the in the ceiling of the stu vast studio in Atlanta, and I followed that, and I was getting instructions through an earpiece of, oh, this is where Asgard, and this is what's happening now. So you know, I was giving my glorious purposes as best I could, and then laughing in the face of, you know, my imminent catastrophic death. So that's 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 what it involved. But having the wind for real was great. It wasn't a hairdryer just blowing or, or strings pulling my, my cape back. These were full on wind machines that I had to shout against. So it was exhilarating. How much did you understand even what the circumstances you were in were like? Did they give you a sense of where the story had been up to that point or did you just kind of come in cold? No, I came in cold and I was only given uh, episode five to read, which is the episode I was in. So I read that and then on my first day, Tom Hiddleston came in and saw me before I started working and said, because he's a walking, breathing, talking Lokipedia, he gave me the sort of Norse background of the stuff and, and gave me his take of what was going on. But I, there was a lot of, oh yeah, no, I did great Tom. And I was kept thinking, God, I've got to imitate, I've got to be the older version of this guy. I don't stand a chance. I don't stand a chance. And certainly not in the muscle-free zone Kermit outfit. So I then zoned in on this speech that he has where unlike uh, Tom's version where he says he's the god of mischief all the time, 
when it says he's the God of the outcasts, and I thought, well, I've been in two weeks quarantine. The shoot when I was supposed to work in March last year got delayed till October when there was a window to be able to go into the States and production had restarted again. And stuck in a hotel room for two weeks, not being able to speak to anybody or have any interaction. I thought, well, when he talks about being God of the outcasts and stuck on these planets for you know so long, that feeling that we all have of longing, unless you are a hermit, to have contact again, I thought that is the key to plugging into who classic old Loki was. And he's prepared to you know, give himself up and be arrested by the TVA and then finally sacrifice himself to Asgard. I get that, I do that, so. So Loki is, is you know, is a survivor as, as that episode and the whole show, you know, Make, makes clear and he's also very good at resurrections so and i am a 64 year old actor who's been in show business over 40 years i know all about just surviving and having many resurrections and demises along the way <laughs> i know all about this stuff believe me <laughs> so should we hope i'm a man who was in hudson hawk need i say more a career ending moment in 1991 oh my god and I'm still here. <laughs> so, so should we hope to see you again? In yes, God, yes, I hope so. But I'm, I've not heard anything. But I think that, you know, Alligator and classic old Logie.com should be a new duo of sub, 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 sub series going on, I don't know, on Planet Zog at 4 a.m. in the morning. But, you know, I'm up for that. <laughs>